Hey guys, welcome to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you all the tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. Today we're gonna to be talking about two features of Rust that we'd like to modify. First one is how long it takes to craft an item. The second one is how long it takes to smelt an ore. And we're gonna get started on both of those in just a second. Here we are in our YouTube test server. I'm just gonna show you how long it takes to craft a stone wall to begin with. So, 30 seconds to craft a stone wall. Let's say that we wanted that to be cut in half or a quarter, or maybe even we wanted to make that an instant craft type of situation. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. On the UMOD website, we're gonna go get a plugin called Crafting Controller. I'll put a link for it down in the description down below. So we're gonna download it, grab it from our downloads folder and drop it into our plugins folder. And then we're gonna hop into the config file for crafting controller and see what's in there. So the very top section of the config file, it's just giving you all of the different messages that the plugin might have to display to different players based on what it is that they're doing. The second half of the config file shows you all the configurable options that we can use to tailor this plugin to how we want it to act in the server. So we'll just go through these one by one. So allow crafting when inventory is full is default false. Um, there's a section here on line 23 that allows you to block items. Uh, so let's say there's things on your server that you don't want people to ever be able to craft. Uh, you can, through the game commands, you can add items to this list so that people can't craft these things. Let's say you run like a, a primitive server where you don't want people to craft guns or C4 or whatever. You can put those things on that list and it makes it so that they can't craft it. Uh, complete current craft on shutdown it's default false and I would suggest that you leave it that way because what will happen if you turn this to true if people have a big queue of uh, items to be crafted all they have to do is log off real quick and it'll instantly finish crafting all of that stuff so it can be kind of a glitch uh, but you can see where it can be useful for moderators or admins so the next line is not really used anymore it's the crafting experience uh, we don't run an XP system anymore, so I'm actually kind of surprised to see that line is still in there. Uh, so you won't use that for anything. So the next line, though, is crafting rate. And this is a line that you are going to use. So at 100, which is where it is right now from default, means it's default crafting times. If we wanted to cut the time in half, we put this to 50. So 50% 50 crafting rate. The next section below that is individual crafting rates. So you, you have the ability to control how long each individual item takes to craft. Let's say you want ammo to take half as long as it should from default. You can put 556 pistol, explodey ammo, whatever in that section there and control just the crafting rate for the items that you have on this list and everything else would stay default. Instant bulk craft for admins pretty self-explanatory if you're an admin it just immediately whatever you select it just immediately crafts it and there's no wait time whatsoever same thing for instant craft for admins uh, this is actually set to true from default I have changed this already to false because I need to be able to show you guys how we've affected the crafting rate on this test server instant craft for moderators pretty self-explanatory show crafting note and then below that we can change in the chat what it's called when it needs to communicate with you. Let's say there's an error and it's not gonna let you craft something. Uh, what it says in chat as a name is down below there. So it's just default called crafting controller and this is the default color. So you've got a little bit of customization that you can do if you want to, or you can just leave it default. I'm just gonna save this config file real quick and reload it onto the server and then we'll hop back in game and I'll show you what we've done. So back to gameplay, uh, we're going to craft another stone wall just so that we can make a direct comparison to what it was before. And as you remember at the beginning of the video, it was 30 seconds to craft a stone wall. So let's see how long it takes now. So of course, we're down to 15 seconds, which is 50% craft time, which is exactly what we changed it to. And this, the way that we've set it up in the config file is going to work for everything on the server. So everything on the server is 50% craft time. So the other plugin that I want to go over with you guys today is a smelting controller. So basically how long it takes for an ore to smelt in a furnace, whether that be small or large. This also affects 
fireplaces, campfires, and barbecues. So we head back over to umod.org and we're going to grab a plugin called Quick Smelt. And I'm just going to quickly download this and install this plugin and we're going to immediately get into it. Here we are at the default config file for Quick Smelt. And we'll just go over a couple of different things in here real quick. The top section is the permission for the plugin. So if you want everyone on the server to be able to benefit from having Quick Smelt on your server, just change this to false. That will make it so that there's no permission required in order for this plugin to affect players. But because this is a tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply the permission. Let's say you wanted to just use it for your VIPs. You only want your VIPs to be able to use Quick Smelt. That's fine. I'll show you exactly how to do that. So this plugin allows you to individually control which cooking device you want to work at what speed. So you have to put this information into the plugin in order for it to work the way that you want it to. So for now, we're just going to start out with the furnace. So we're just going to take this furnace short name. That's just a placeholder that's telling you where something needs to be changed. So we're just going to change this to uh, the actual furnace, just like that. And let's say that we want to uh, multiply the furnace's quick smelt rate to 10 times. So let's just save that real quick and reload our plugin. Now we're going to go back to gameplay. So first thing we need to do once we get back into game, like I said a minute ago, we need to apply the permission to the appropriate group of players that we want to be able to benefit from this plugin. For this example, we're just going to use the group default like we do in most cases for testing purposes, just so that anyone that comes into the server can reap the benefits of the plugin. So we're just going to go into permissions manager and make the changes for quick smelt. So here we have the options, which is super simple. It's just granted or revoked. And we're going to grant the group default the permission to use quick smelt. Now we can go over to our furnace, dump some ore in there, and we can see that we've increased our smelting times or smelting speeds to 10 times what it was before. But if we go outside to where our large furnace is, we're going to notice that our smelting time is exactly the same as default. This is basically vanilla smelting time. So in order to change that, we would have to go back into our config file and add the large furnace to our list of modifiers. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so back in our config file, we want to add another uh, cooking device. And this time we're going to do furnace large. And we're also going to make this one at 10 times smelt speed. Save, reload. And once we're back in the game, let's just test this again. Let's put our ore in there. And there we go. We can see that we've increased the speed of the large furnaces as well as the small furnaces to 10 times what they are from default. So as you can see, I'm burning through a stack of a thousand metal ore in less than, definitely less than 45 seconds. So that's just the quick and easiest way to control the smelting rate on your server. The section down below this area where we are right now gives you the ability to control how much fuel it uses, how often it ticks, add a, an output multiplier. So uh, from default, one ore will give you one item of whatever that ore is. We can add an output multiplier to that so that if we put in one ore, let's say you wanted to give out three, you can change that right here in the output multiplier section. So this section right here is only used if you want to be able to control all of those different variables of your furnaces. This next section down below it is a white list and a black list. So as we all know from default, we can't cook food in furnaces, but let's say we want our players to be allowed to do that. All we'd have to do is add all of the different types of raw food to the white list, and it will allow them to cook those items in furnaces or wherever it is that you are trying to you could make it so that they can cook in refineries if you want oh refineries is another thing that uh, can be added to this list that we can increase the smelting rate on if you're going to add the ability to cook food in furnaces you have to add raw food as well as cooked food now here's 
something important to note. If you're going to do that, you need to decide if you want to allow it to burn food as well. So if you don't want it to allow burnt food in it, uh, don't do anything. Just add raw food and cooked food and that's it. If you do want to allow it to accumulate burnt food, you have to put burnt food on the whitelist as well. All right, so hopefully this video helped you out in some way. If it did, do me a favor and like the video. If you'd like to see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification bells so you get notified as soon as I upload new content. I hope you guys are enjoying this series that I'm putting together on owning and operating your servers. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave me comments down below. I'll make sure I answer every single one of them. If you'd like to see other videos that are in this playlist, just click on the box in the top right hand corner right now. And if you want to see what's going on in my personal life, click the box in the bottom right hand corner. It links to another channel, my personal channel, shows you a little bit what my life is like. Okay, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great day.